Okay, uh, welcome to the June 11th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Um, we'll hope if people have public comments, they were notified to come here. Um, they are stuck. Um, as always, we open our meetings with any public comments uh, not related to the application to expedite review. So is anyone here to speak to that? No? Okay, uh, next thing on the agenda is the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve its minutes of, someone help me out, what, what meeting is there? April 4th. April 4th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, dis uh, second? Second. Uh, discussion? Mm -hmm. Sir, I, I noticed that you indicated there was a recusal. It might be good to just name that it was Martha who specifically accused herself so that it's clear. Just sure. in case it's a question. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Uh, all in favor of approval of the minutes? Opposed? Okay. Uh, chair's report. Um, I had the good fortune, I think this was since the last meeting, to go to two events. One was the Leeds Historic uh, Open House there for the signage that we funded, which was really nice. It was postponed, I think it was on Mother's Day, down there being on Sunday, Mother's Day. There was a big crowd there. And if people haven't seen those signs or walked through that section, it's, it's really pretty cool. And there was a good crowd. I'd say there was 30 or 40 people there or something. I made it in. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Wasn't it nice? Yeah. And the signs, the signs are really well done. So we can thank ourselves for that and thank the Leeds Association for doing such a nice job. The project, I uh, received a preservation award from the Historical Commission this year. Just okay. Part of its information. Well, that's very cool. Uh, the other thing that um, I went to, and I can't, I think this since the last meeting, was the opening of uh, Live 155, right? And then you were there. Mm -hmm. And that was really, I, I went there thinking there'd be like, you know, 10 people and some cheese and crackers. It was really pretty good event. <laughs> and they really had lots of folks from uh, the governor's office and the state and all the nonprofits. It was really quite, I mean, I'd say there were 100 people or so. And again, at both of that CPC was given a good shout out for the work that we did at Open Fund, both those projects. So that was the other thing I have to report is that um, uh, I uh, initially thought I had, would have a conflict of interest in uh, dealing with the Dell Self proposal. Um, my wife and I inherited a bunch of money when our, both our sets of parents died. Um, we formed a for-profit corporation, Fippin Adams Solar, my wife's name is Maury Fippin. And the goal is to put solar on nonprofits in the valley whose mission we agree with and will own their own buildings. Um, we enter into a purchase power agreement with those nonprofits for a period of six years and we gift the solar systems to them. So ultimately it's a philanthropic thing, but there is a, a business arrangement with that. Uh, we have so far put solar up on two of the Dallas cell properties, one in Turner's and one in Greenfield, um, and had plans to put it up on the new build, which is what this proposal is. So I was unclear whether that was, I need to recuse myself from any of these discussions. Um, but Alan Seawalt, who's our city solicitor, as I think you all know, uh, said that as long as it's not, I don't have a relationship with the city, then it's, then it's good to go. Um, so he wrote me a lengthy email, which I don't need to do, but he said, I, I, I can be part of this. He does not see a conflict of interest, um, just that I publicly disclose that to, to you. Uh, it says, if you subjectively believe that um, you could be fair and objective, uh, then I do not need to accuse myself. Mm -hmm. Unless people feel otherwise, I think I can attempt to manage that. Not that I'm ever fair and objective about anything. <laughs> that make an exception in this case. Um, so we have one item on the agenda tonight, and that is the expedite proposal for the team housing um, uh, project that um, you all voted to uh, expedite. 
a um, week and a half ago or whatever that was. Um, so I think we'll begin with uh, Phil. Do you want to present? Uh, start with that. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, thank you again, everyone, for the time out of your busy summer schedules to review the application. Um, like Brian said, we did just meet about a week and a half ago, and we discussed a lot of the, the project then. So I, I won't waste a lot of time today, kind of trying to rehash those details. Just a quick summary. Um, so again, in short, uh, Dial Self is requesting a commitment of $236,000 from the FY 2019 funding pool um, with cash needed sometime in October, November um, 2018. The funds will be used for construction of four new enhanced SRO housing units for youth and young adults experiencing homelessness. Um, the expedited award will allow the construction schedule to go ahead as planned and potentially save $50,000 or more in construction costs due to current strong building market conditions, rapidly rising construction costs. Um, it also help us bring online four individual housing units um, faster, and these units are very important to the continuum of housing um, that Dial Self has in terms of our um, options. Many of the youth experiencing homelessness in the greater Northampton area present with very high mental health and life skill needs, and a number of those youth are, are more suited to individual housing units than a two-person roommate situation, so it's really important for us to have, um, as soon as we can, have a, a full continuum of different options for youth in different stages. Um, so, um, as stated in the application, um, the project fills a need for Northampton to create supportive uh, affordable housing um, for underserved populations, creates four units of housing for low to moderate income folks, um, youth experience, uh, youth 24, experiencing or at risk of becoming homeless, and also helps support youth becoming members of the community, um, allowing them to stay in the community they love. Um, the project also uses energy efficient designs, high efficiency heat pump technology, using cooling, and as you start to use a full solar power array. Um, really in terms of the, um, the construction timeline here, the service delivery and the project cost control, um, I included in the addendum materials since the, the last meeting, um, an updated pre-construction and construction timeline, as well as information um, supporting the rapidly increasing cost of construction. Um, that itself would not be here asking for funds out of the normal CPC cycle if it were not um, for the impact that the time has on the project's success. Um, also, as requested about a week and a half ago, um, I broke out the additional requested uh, materials. In the, in the additional requested material, um, there's uh, information for potential phased construction schedule. Um, and this option would still increase the cost of the construction. Um, and the project can delay, uh, potentially delay completion of the housing units, but could somewhat reduce the cost increases compared to no construction at all. So, um, uh, present um, here is also a, a Scott Kiter from Kiter Builders, who's our GC on the project. Um, in case you have additional questions about the construction cycle um, and our costs. And other than that, I think I just want to kind of open it up to, um, to questions and really appreciate you taking the time to consider our request. Thank you, Phil. Um, perhaps before we get to questions, if we could just have, um, make sure we're all on the same page regarding what type of money we're gonna have available to us for fiscal year 19. As we all know, that begins July 1st. Um, Sarah sent us that email today. Did people have a chance to look at that? So let me summarize if I can. And Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, well, we really have 1.287 million that uh, is estimated with our, our, our local amount. When we remove the large amount of bonding that we have and the administrative uh, uh, portion that leaves us with an estimated 655,000, I think is what Sarah said, for our, for our local stuff. If in fact the state comes through at somewhere around 11%, which is what Sarah is thinking, but we don't know, that 11% is based on the 1.287 million, is that correct? That's right. So that would be about $140,000 more? And that would all go into the unrestricted pool. That does not get, go into the 10%. Okay. So the 655 plus 140 is just a little bit shy of 800,000, like 795, is that correct? Are people following the math there? Yeah, so the 300 that's in the spreadsheet is 
Yeah, we just have a John sign. A follow-up email, sir. You know about this, John Price. Yeah, I think it's just. Okay, because his figures are different. Yeah. Which is like twenty something percent. He's showing the state match at three hundred. Three hundred, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but it nobody was an knows. Assumption. So it, yeah. It's yeah. All, yeah. It's all yeah. Assumption. That's our yeah. yeah. best guess. We don't. We well, just assume it'll be three billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is the money that we know for sure that we will have for the next. So we're, we're hoping for over 800,000, but we're looking at if, in fact, the state comes in 11%, we're hoping more, correct? We are. Um, at a minimum, then, could we say we have 795,000? That's probably the that's probably same. Okay. And as folks read from at least Sarah's portion, 128,700, excuse me, $700 of that is earmarked for affordable housing. Uh, and 200 and something thousand is in the unrestricted. And that's some our local stuff, so we'll have well, actually quite a bit more in, in, in uh, unrestricted. Uh, this will be, and again, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, the first for the CPC to actually be one awarding funds that we don't have um, and waiting till July 1st. And having an expedited proposal of this magnitude go in uh, with such little money to spend for both fall and spring of this year, 2009. So that is the task in front of us that the impact of this proposal really does have ripple effects going down through the fall and spring. Is everybody on the same page, fiscally mm -hmm. financially? Any questions to Sarah about money? So let's go back to uh, Phil and uh, Steve, right? Scott. Scott, I'm sorry. Uh, Phil and Scott, questions? They actually answer everyone's questions and then when I submit it, no. <laughs> there was no estimate included. I mean, there was a, a bid, I guess, in here, a construction bid. There's no estimate included. Right. I guess it. Um, in terms of the the itemized, there, sort of. I don't think the full itemized estimate was not included in that. Um, correct. Okay. Do you have one that you didn't share or? Um, there was sure. Uh, there was an original bid that uh, went through approximately a, one month ago that came in over budget. Mm -hmm. And we're in the process of rebidding the project. We were hired as a construction manager. Yeah, I guess I mean, before the construction manager was brought on board, did you do, you said you did some estimating beforehand. I guess you did it with your architect. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that didn't include? That, I, I think I referenced in, I thought I had referenced in the original, but, uh, or one of these. So we had, the architect had done their initial cost estimation using a per square foot cost estimate. So that was the that, that, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you asking about their initial estimate or the first round of? General contractors. No, no, they're actual estimates okay. before they got gotcha. the Yeah. Okay. Was the original um, building work put out to bid? I saw that Wright Builders did the work. Was that put out to bid as well? The original uh, building work, renovation work, was not put out to bid. And why was that? Um, I, I believe right. it, it was, was uh, before it was transferred. Correct. To it was you. before it was transferred to Donald South. I believe there was a, an arrangement between the Wright Builders and, and the friends in Hampton County Homes and I believe John Wright and made some commitments around um, doing additional discounts or something like that with uh, the project. Um, Rick's unfortunately not able to be here today. He's wearing one of his other nonprofit hat, another fundraising event that he's in charge of. So. How so much more did that cost? Um, the uh, renovation work. Yeah. Um, the renovation work in total was about 152,000, um, and uh, I think it came in probably about 30,000 or so over um, the original um, bid from Wright Builders. But the final was 152. The final was 152. This is sort of repeating what was said at the at, at the last meeting, but I'm I'm still struggling with this. Um, if, if you combine the 275, well, let me preface it again by saying what was said last time, which was that the 
the project, the purposes, the, um, is absolutely wonderful and, and needed. Um, but it's a, it's a question of competing interests. There's mm -hmm. other, unfortunately, there are other, other things that need support as well. Um, and I think if we, if we had seen a project that came in requesting over $500,000 for eight units, um, that would have given the committee pause. I don't know what we would have done with it, but I'm, I'm not sure we would have approved that. That's more than we've given, I think, to any other housing project when we might have at that time said, um, you know, what else can we do here? Is there some way to, to scale this down or to accomplish this some other way? Um, so what I'm struggling with is we approved a project for 275,000, which we thought was going to deliver the eight to 10 units. Um, and then there was a significant change in the whole approach to the project. And rather than coming back to the committee and saying, are you with us? You know, this might cost us more. If we got your go ahead, um, we're sort of presented with a fait accompli. And I don't doubt that it will cost more and that if, if you have to wait. Um, but it's a very big ask. And I don't think the process was really handled as well as it, as it might have been from our perspective. I'm sure you had lots of imperatives and were going a thousand miles a minute. Um, but in terms of our decision making, it's, it's a very big ask at this point because we don't as we said last time, we don't know what else is coming in and in fairness to them trying to, to line them all up. At the same time, I appreciate that you're halfway there. <laughs> and that's a very difficult, very difficult situation. So I guess I'm asking you to make a pitch to help me. There is a question here somewhere, <laughs> which is what can you do to get me over this hump? Because it's a, it's a Big pump for me. Certainly, yeah. I'm mean, thinking, you know, Dial Self has been working hand in hand with the friends, and it's, it's been a, it's a tricky process. You know, I, the, where the friends were the original applicant for the, the funds, and that was before uh, a, a property had even been selected. Um, and I think that there's definitely some communication between the friends and Dial Self that could have gone um, better in understanding the requirements and the initial um, funding um, process for the CBC funds that they were using to complete the, the, the purchase transactions with um, uh, the, the current property setup. Um, uh, that being said, I know that when they were originally working with us and the original vision of the project was to you know, find um, a property that, that would work within the original um, funding scope. Um, and uh, you know, after over you know, a year of looking at the different properties um, and watching this, the, the market go up and up and up, there was definitely a lot of pressure to try to figure out a way to, to, to keep the project going in, in a different way. I think I talked a little bit about that last time. Um, but uh, it sounds like certainly um, on our part, it would have been great if um, the, the friends had done a little bit of self with them had um, brought some of this back to the, the CPC um, earlier on. We can agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I do think that you know, where um, you, you, can, you can definitely successfully say that the initial um, request um, was successful in creating you know four, four bedrooms worth of, of housing for youth and you know, this is a, so again I don't know what your ratio would be normally for per unit housing for supported housing like this if it was a single project at 275 and a single project at um, 36, um, just trying to look at math in different ways here in terms of how you might have approach that as two projects instead of one project. One project, two phases. Um, but we're, we could definitely are at a place where you know, just that, a little bit of extra. That, 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 that one, one good infusion can, can really take this to, to the next level. And just, this right now is kind of our only only option in that time frame that, that we're, that's a possibility. So I recognize that you know the project hasn't um, the CPC in the best position and, and could have handled things better. 
apologize for that. And it's just uh, to say that we are making every effort we can pass all these managing this to try to have communication for as fast as possible when there's any changes and um, we would we'll continue to do so in the future. Um, can you speak to the cost increases of, say, a two month delay or three month delay? I think one of the the challenges is the winter. And you're going. You're having some winter conditions anyway, right? I think the, the way schedule that, would take you through. The way it's put together now, we'd stay ahead of the winter. So, if if we do get in the ground in the middle of July, mm -hmm. we'll be able to avoid winter conditions. And of course, if the phases are stretched out a little bit, then. Yes, we would probably get into winter conditions, which would be temporary heating and snow management, and things of that nature. I, th I thought it was taking you through February, though, so you've only got like one more month of winter. Well, given this year, not three more months of winter, but um, a normal year. If we, I think we're projecting the project to be six months to finish to turn heat. And that last month is really punch listing and light duty work. Okay. So I think yeah. it should kind of keep yeah. us in front of that if everything goes well. Um, so you're hoping end of December. That's yeah, I think that's what it was. So I think, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that, and that's reasonable. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a 2,600 square foot wood frame building. It's basically a house. It just hap happens to have four units in it, so four kitchens and four and it's commercial code, so there's some complexities with fire suppression and things like that. But for the most part, it's a, it's a house. So can you translate the winter conditions for a couple more months into a dollar amount? Um, typically, winter conditions we carry as an allowance just because it really depends on the winter uh, as to how um, severe that could be you know it, and it also depends on what we're talking about in terms of construction phase if we're outside and trying to side and roof in the winter that's obviously a whole different thing than being done on the exterior and working inside and just dealing with temporary heat and plowing and keeping the area clear um, but it it can add up very much um, we do it all the time we just need to be prepared to have those funds to, to sustain construction through the winter in the Northeast. I think the other piece of it is just as a jeep. I'm looking for some sense. Of yeah, if I were to carry an allowance off, I'd say ten to fifteen thousand dollars. I would carry if I was going to go through the whole winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we may use eight thousand. And for that matter, you could use a little bit more. I mean, that's the trick of it. We just don't know. And if I can speak of the other things that I think are realistic to anticipate would be just if you fragment the construction cycle through phasing, it is a little bit more difficult to uh, maintain. With it, when you lose that continuity, you're, you can expect your prices to go up. It's just the way it is. So if you're asking your subs to break up their contract into different segments, mm -hmm. and that's that's understandable because you're they're losing economies of scale. <coughs> Um, having to man the, the project multiple times um, and then the other thing is just is just the concern about just overall um, market things that are completely out of all of our um, power which would be just market uh, material price increases which is a real thing at this point it's it's significant and you know I guess just weighing those those things out I it when we when we created the phases for for Phil, we tried to do that in such a way that there would be logical set delineations in that timeline, so that if you chose to just do phase one or phase two, phase one and phase two, and then shut the door for a few months, that's a possibility. Um, phase two would get you all the way through the exterior shell. So if you hustled to get that part of it done and then you did need to wait for funds, that's reasonable to do. I think I would try to get through phase two, um, which would at least provide you, you're out, up and out of the ground, you have a completely secure building, the exterior work is done. 
and if you were to choose to do interior work, you'd have that opportunity to be ready to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if you needed to wait it out, you could do that as well. The building would be protected and safe. And obviously there's operating, you know, when you do that, you also, of course, have operating expenses, mortgages to pay, and sure. insurances, and um, those different things. I would never want to guess what those would cost. But, but those are, from a building, builder's point of view, I think I would encourage you to get through the end of what we're calling phase two, which is uh, a building shell that's weather tight and lockable and secure. And I think we figured on that probably to being about three months worth of work. And what would be the consequence if you did phase one and waited to the spring for two? You three, would want four. to put just a little bit more money that's not being shown in that particular phase, which you would probably categorized as a winter condition, and that would be money to protect that asset with probably some foam. You, you would be Yeah, just be concerned about the, the slab heaving. If the, the building is on slab, so at the end of the day, the, the first floor tenant's feet are on that same concrete slab, so you'd want to make sure that you protect that from uh, a deep frost which would be, you know, $5,000, let's say, to seal, protect it with foam, tarp it, and um, weight it down, you know, and that's a guess. And you said that uh, seventy five to 100000 would uh, get you through phase two, is that correct? Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. The only other thing, just if you only do phase one, you would also need to add in some out of sequence site protections. Typically you would want a site stabilization because typically you would want to complete the construction of the building and all of that heavy equipment and then address rough grade and stabilizing that. If you were just gonna go subsurface, pack it up, you would need to have a little bit of a redundancy there, just so that you don't have a nightmare on the spring. So related to that, um, I, I noticed in your um, revenue expense summary, um, there's a there's twenty five thousand for site work. So what type of site work is going to be involved? Is it a pretty small lot, right? Is there paving or parking or the the project? has been re-engineered to reduce the site work. There was a very significant amount of subsurface stormwater management that was going on. Um, we've been ne negotiating with Doug from the city and Berkshire Design has been redesigning the system, so we expect the cost to go down a little bit. But although it's a tight site, there's a lot going on on the site and that, that number also carries concrete. So that's your, that's your footing. Concrete, you mean for the building? Yes. So that's your demolition of existing structures, all of your site, you know, all of your general conditions and stabilizing the site, erosion controls, things like that. That is your excavation and subsurface infrastructure, uh, tying in your new water main, new potable water, drainage. I think we've abandoned the stormwater interconnection but the sprinkler system, getting all of that underground, the electrical, um, that is- the service is not in the building. Five into, the building. just into the foundation, into the- So you're including the foundation in that number too? Yes. It's all of your footings, cross walls, steel, slab, sub-slab sub preparation, parking lots, sub subsurface electrical to power lighting, exterior lighting, um, driveway. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's pretty clear the disadvantage at which this committee is faced to spend public money in this kind of way. It is not the way to, I mean, first of all, not having any like, detailed estimate of any of this stuff, and then the fact that there's 125 number and the, oh, the foundation's in there, that means we're spending 325 bucks a foot, not including foundations to build this building. Which, as you say, is just really a house with sprinklers. You know, I mean, there's a lot of kitchens in it, but it's just unclear. I mean, there's no particular way that we can judge 
whether this is an appropriate use of public money, I, I, I don't think, <laughs> you know? And I don't want to, I don't feel like, I, I don't want to make every time I say something like, oh, of course I agree with your mission, and I do. But it just seems the process is just like out of control. It seems to me that as soon as you knew you were buying this lot, you would know that you had a project on your hands of some dollars per square foot, and you knew you didn't have the money to do it. Or whoever you, or whoever was controlling the project at that time. I just don't see that the time, to me this seems like a self-imposed time crunch on this committee. I think it's expedited. I understand why we're doing it now. I just don't see how it's fair to anyone else who might apply for funding, as well as I don't know what the history is of other entities who might sue the CPC and say, you guys went out of your bounds to give money to someone else. I wanted that money. I'm more worth one of them. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't see the argument. And then going back to 2016, I think basically it's in breach of the contract. I mean, we gave all this money for a specific project. As soon as that project was a different project, someone should have come back to us. And I know it's not you two, but you're here now, so. <laughs> it just seems like, you know, we've had people come back to us for much less changes to the contract than this. This is a totally different project. I mean, it's for the same clients, which is important. I understand that, but it's a totally different project from mine. I think it's our, it's actually, I, put, I was on the committee when we approved this, and I don't think in retrospect we should have approved it, because it was such a fuzzy, I think we kind of overlooked the fact that there was no actual site in the actual, because we liked the project. And in retrospect, it was not defined enough, I don't think, for us to put uh, taxpayer dollars in front of, I would think, that just seems, um, and because of the rush, it's forced I mean, to, to go to a, uh, I don't know if it was a, C I can't tell if it was a CM process, you guys were bidding a yeah, that's CM? Right. It, sure it's that. $275 a square foot, all in, including site work, so I just make sure that we're clear on that. That's all in. Okay. Um, the process was very formal and very organized. Uh, Jones Witsit architects were hired by Dial Self. They ran a very formal bid process with an excellent set of plans and specifications. There were at least three or four bidders on the project. Um, we, the, the project came in over budget. Mm -hmm. We were hired at that point as a construction manager. So we, we were recognized to be the, the winning bidder. Mm -hmm. And then our firm was brought in to work with Jones Whitset and Phil's team <coughs> to value engineer the project and bring it. So when you say construction manager, what do you mean? We're, help, we're being hired to execute the project under a guaranteed maximum price contract. It's not open to sub, they're not, they're not seeing the sub bids? Or are they, they are. They are. Oh yeah, we're representing them and going out to minimum. So why haven't you shared those with us? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, uh, we're in mid, so just the way the timing has worked out, I don't know whether you shared the original bid with them. Um, I don't think I shared all the, the, the original bids. Okay. No. But we we will receive the revision set of drawings last week. So we're rebidding the project, and we should have that information for Tuesday of next week. Because from our point of view, some, they're coming to us and saying, the pro this project is much more expensive than we thought because of site work, because of something about asbestos, which I've been able to figure out, because of other things, because of a porch, because of whatever, casework. So we're saying, oh, it's more expensive than a project we've never even heard of. <laughs> It's a more expensive than a project that we've never heard about ever. So we have no way to value to, to put any to judge whether you're, what you're saying is accurate. There, where there's no baseline for us to judge against. You understand? Like what, when you say the, the, the site work is more expensive than we thought, what did you think? What what specifically is in there that wasn't in there in your original assumptions? I'm not saying you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know any of this stuff. The casework is too expensive. The shingles are, we all know shingles are expensive because of, you know, we can't trade with Canada anymore. So maybe you don't need to use shingles here, you know, maybe you use something, you know, all these things, we don't, we're not hearing any of that stuff. So I'm not saying you're not doing it, but this is not our money, you know? Gotcha. So um, I can just go back to, I think it kind of goes back to the statement you made about um, the, the self-imposed time crunch. So, um, so the Friends Dale self has been operating based on a, an assumption of a certain amount of funds available. Um, right up to the point where the, 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 the formal bids went out. And so we were making, at the, at the time that the, the project decided that it was gonna sh shift from and add that construction element, it was still using basically the same fundraising 
numbers for the most part that it was using at the time um, that it applied to the CPC for the first round. We were uh, operating under that, that set of numbers um, based on the architect's initial per square foot estimates for the property. Which um, was what? Um, which was a $480,000 total um, for the property. So I think it was a 240 per square foot or something uh, around that. 480 total construction for the new building? For the new well, building. For both buildings? For the new building. Okay. Yeah. Um, with, under that level, we had figured out enough ways to, between the two agencies to, to cover that, the cost of that, that project um, with, with the, the funds that were, that were allotted. When the bids came in, which came in certainly after the last CPC cycle, um, well, well, came through. Before so, you get to the bids, yeah. so what changed before? That's a big amount to be off. It was a very big amount to be off. Very that it was off. JWA, you know, gave gave a number based on construction costs, and when we worked with them on the, the project budget, um, they they failed to. So the square foot some things. The, per, the, the square footage that they were basing that 480 off is roughly what is it? 2300. It's 2650. It's 2650. All right. So that's basically the same. That was the same size building. Um, so exactly. the other things that shifted was when they when JWA was fully hired on for the project, which is after they provided the initial um, cost estimates, um, they realized that the, the building footprint that they originally designed for us um, pro bono wasn't actually going to be big enough for the units. There were several different code things that they needed to change. So the building's actual footprint went from a 2,000 square foot building to a 2,650 square foot building. They also, in their original estimates, um, did not Anticipate the or didn't didn't factor in demo costs and certain other site work um, that um, I sure. had assumed that they had included in that original estimate to us. Okay, so go. You said so. I, I maybe I'm doing that wrong. It's eight hundred. I'm seeing eight hundred fifty thousand dollars construction cost, right? Is that wrong? That's in there. Well, that, that, that's in, including architect fees for the process and. Oh, that's the total construction. Okay, yeah. so the 650 is the number. Plus, yeah. plus the site work there. Other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 if somebody else wants to ask a question first, I'm happy to hold. I have one other question. Um, in your um, revenue and expense summary for the project, uh, you may list all of your sources of funding, and obviously many of these are committed or in hand. Um, there's several though that are not, <coughs> and I just wonder if you could comment on the status of those. Um, so specifically, um, found foundations, um, major donations, gotcha. funding events. Um, so we have a number of individuals who have done major contributions to asphalt projects in the past. Um, uh, yeah, we have like uh, some of them, some significant. We have three of those conversations um, lined up. A couple of the folks in that um, in that pool um, have are familiar, are understand where we are in this process, and have asked to to wait to talk with us until after um, the the CBC um, meeting tonight um, to know what's going on with that because they 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 are. They may be willing to put funds in to help do the final um, close in the project, but they may not necessarily be willing to commit funds um, until they know some of the, that larger fund um, fund space has been made up. Um, and the others? And in terms of uh, fundraising events, um, we're, we're working with the friends of the Country County homeless uh, individuals right now to try to get, get put together a scheduled list of fundraisers throughout the summer and fall. Um, and in terms of foundations, um, we have three existing applications out that, if they were funded fully, would actually make up that whole seventy-five thousand. And we're in the process of um, continuing to work on identifying other targets, um, target foundations that we worked with before as well on this project. Um, uh, a number of those, I think, I think all three of those applications, we should know um, by. The, the November or December. Um, in terms of the ones that have been fully submitted so far. Um, does that all three of those? It does. Okay. Thank you. Good.
without full funding, you would continue to uh, begin in the middle of July? Um, we would certainly look towards um, getting phase one done if we could, um, and then we pretty much have to stop at phase one at that point um, until we had enough additional funding in play to know that we had the, the, the cash available to commit funds to phase two. Um, so we need to, um, uh, in terms of the timeline, we, we need to be able to um, commit to the second phase GMP contract with um, Crater Builders with enough time for them to buy out all their subs as well. So I'm not sure what we think that, that timeline would be in terms of when we'd need to make that commitment to, to have an uninterrupted break um, between phase one and phase two. Um, not very long. Phase one is yeah. probably about six weeks. So I'm trying to play this forward in what, what might happen next. Uh, and as I think about your request, and I know we asked you for this, so this is a little unfair, but um, your request for the for the 75 or to 100,000 to get you through phase two, um, what I see is that you are then coming back to us for the balance of the money plus this additional fundraising. So if we put in the 75 to 100, we're really adding another 75 to 100,000 to the 275. And without the final contribution, we got nothing for that money. So it, 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 I'm not saying that very well, but it almost doesn't. Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm not sure I, I see that as a real option for us because that's almost like asking us to make the decision on the full 236,000. And I'm also a little concerned that there is um, still a significant fundraising gap, so it's possible we could put in that money and you're still short. And then. So I'm, I don't know if it's possible to. To do additional fundraising and come back when numbers are more certain and funding is more certain, and we feel like at this point we know what we're putting. We got a project. We know what it's going to cost, and we know that the money that we put in is is going to be all that we have to put in, and it's going to achieve its its purpose. I hear that the friends and Dazzle do have a very strong track record in terms of doing fundraising, certainly friends for this project and Dial Salt for, for other projects in the past. So I think the, the numbers seem very, very doable. But however, what we ran into is a, a time frame right, where we just realized we need to raise this additional, this level of additional funding, you know. But what I'm not hearing so. is that if we don't put in the full request that you have an ability to raise the difference. If we only put in hundred thousand dollars, you then looking at raising another hundred and thirty-six thousand, or potentially at that point looking at um, additional financing options on the project, which in that range might be possible. Um, and so for the operation, so uh, taking, taking out some financing, correct. But you don't you don't have your subsidies yet, so your operating income is not really set. It's 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 limited. The the, our con the contract funds that are listed in the operating pro forma on the um, the right side of that column that says HTLP. Wait wait, 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 wait till I get there. Sure. Yeah. Page eleven of the original application. Oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah. So so. Just under half of that is, is definitely set in terms of allocations from our existing one of our existing contracts that we have at least for the next five years um, guaranteed, um, and we could potentially allocate some additional um, resources from that contract to this project if we needed to on the operating side. Um, it doesn't allow us to. It's only for services and, and, and service delivery pieces, so I can't use it for construction costs, but I, I can use it for operating costs. So I could potentially direct additional funds um, towards operating. Um, 
the project. And away from services? Mm -hmm. And away from services? Mm -hmm. Well, it's designed specifically to support this type of service. So we would be having to figure out a way to shift it from one of our other projects that does have subsidies. I see. So it would mean we might, you know, we might be looking at how do we manage that from some of our other projects in terms of spreading spreading something out for a couple of years while we're dealing with financing. But. Other questions? Uh, Chris, anything? Um, yeah. Um, I think the discussion about the expedited process is one we're going to have to have on another on another day. Just generally how that how that works. Um, I came here tonight um, a little bit frustrated by how my inability to understand how we got to this moment in time. I think David helped answer that a little bit for me because we didn't we did not I didn't fully understand what we were looking at when we looked at this back in 2016 and probably didn't do a good enough job vetting it for myself at that point. Um, I think Linda articulated a couple things beautifully. One is this sort of queasy feeling I get of a fait accompli, which I, always makes me uncomfortable even if it doesn't exist. Um, but I also think you raised a good point, Linda, about, you know, it seems to me that when we asked Phil to come in with a phased assessment. What we were really, at least in my mind, at least partially doing was trying to buy ourselves a little more time until we knew where we were going to be with regard to the totality of what we we're going to be looking at over the next year and and hoping that, I don't know, maybe something magical was going to happen or at least we would feel a little more confident that the, that the substantial amount of money we were being asked to, to, um, to contribute uh, without knowing how that fit into the framework of the other two rounds, um, we'd be a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, I now feel that the phased approach really doesn't work, um, and that what we're what we're effectively confronted with is a situation where we wouldn't do all or nothing on this, um, and nothing is an option. Um, I don't think it's a good option, but I think it's a table. I think it's one that needs to be on the table. Um, so that's not a question, but it's it's where I it's where I've been, and I I really appreciate having you guys um, help tease it out for me because there, when I got here this, this evening, I was still confused as to as to what I, I'm still confused as to what I wanted to, but um, I have a little more clarity about um, why I'm, why I'm confused. <laughs> Um, I think you have a you have a great project. Um, I can't get past um, the other projects that might come up when the regular session starts and the, and the one after it in the spring. And at this point, we just don't know what else is going is going to come forward. Um, so I just don't want to necessarily commit us to something and then have a whole truckload get dumped on us in September. That, um, we have no maneuverability at that point because we made a decision in, in uh, June. And I'm still wrestling with that. I was wrestling with that May 30th. Um, I still am. I think some of the, I think David had a lot of good points. Um, about we just we just don't know in terms of comparative this compared to what I think some of the um, I think the 400 400,000 amount being off that much was an eye-opener to me perhaps that's that's normal in the industry but um, I don't understand it that way the other one the, the 30,000 is like I can live with that I think the scope changed drastically yeah. when the building size increased. Yeah, twenty-five percent then had a ripple effect. But I, I think we were right to consider this for expedited consideration. Um, I'm probably still wrestling a little bit, like Chris, about I don't, I'm not sure what I want to do with this. 
Yep, and um, we need to talk as a group more. Um, as to, like Martha had a question about three, was it three grants that you, uh, were, you were applying for in steady and rapid succession, and that was predicated on a CPC commitment? Uh, that's three um, major donors. So that those are individual asks in terms of that we're waiting to hear how to hear about what, what yeah. we do here. Okay. There are folks who have put in from ten to forty-five thousand dollars into a project for for us. So and it's been several years since we asked them to come down the project. So they they were interested in hearing about what we were working on, but um, uh, we'll have to see how things played out. And some of this is the same material that I provided. Um, you in terms of where we were, in terms of sources, uses, where, where we are, in terms of, you know, what we were before, and when they said they wanted to, they wanted to know where that was at before they made the decision on what they were going to do. Okay. Okay. That's all they've got now. Julie? I don't have much to add to the conversation. I think a lot of the points that people have made are points that I'm struggling with as well. I'm also looking back at what we did in fiscal year 18 and we had requests this large or larger and in fiscal year 18 we were never able to fully fund a request of this size in the course of the whole year when we were reviewing applications all at the same time. So I think that's another piece that we have to think about as a committee that even if this were in regular cycle would we would we be able to to meet that need if we wanted to because we we didn't do that last year, and it looks like we're coming in with a budget close to last year. And we don't again, we don't know what the request will be, but we saw a lot over the over the last few years, and I'm expecting a lot coming in. Julie, just out of curiosity, because I don't have it in front of me, 2018. I know we had a lot of housing requests. We did. funded a lot of housing. Can you just give us a range of what those awards were? Um, so the requests, I can say, range from. On the lowest end, 20, and on the high end, 150. And the largest uh, that we approved was 300, but most of them we were approving around the 50 to 60 thousand dollar range. And that was for the SRO. And, and that was housing, so yeah. That right. So that Sergeant was the uh, Sergeant House, which we were able to do some historic, some undesignated. So that really. But, um, we did a bunch of habitats. That's what I say. It was habitat. Yeah. There's uh, Northampton Housing Partnership, Village Hill, Garfield, Glendale, which is habitat. And then yeah. this was bigger. Village Hill, we only made 50. Yep, that's right. We did 50 for Village Hill. And their request was 350. So, Thank you. so we, we, you know, that, that's another thing to keep in mind is that even in a cycle where we have, we know all the money, we know all the requests, requests we haven't been able to fully, we haven't been fully funded. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, housing folks, Linda and Jeff and Sarah and Peg, is, do we know things coming in? Do we have any idea what's coming in in the fall or spring? Mm. Is there any that's indication that? I don't know. I tried to, should be coming back. Yeah. That's Sorry. I tried no, to no, no, no. do some due diligence prior to tonight to help you. Mm. I failed. Um, <laughs> I did email TCB and the ICDC to see if they were planning on coming in. Um, Sergeant House has said Jay Ash is coming out tomorrow afternoon. It's looking good for state funding. You know, we, we have a finite amount of developers that cycle around, and we know that related to capacity issues, you're only going to see them every now and then. So Sergeant House is done. Habitat um, will not be back in as far as I can tell. I'm giving them 135000 of CDBG money for infrastructure for the Glendale Road project, and they're set on Verona Garfield. And um, there's a new state program that's finally targeted to smaller projects. So TCB and Valley CDC on the two Village Hill projects, I mean, the, the one big one they have since divided into two. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but mm -hmm. as you go into the Village Hill entrance, they're doing a smaller 12-unit mixed-use building. And then the big 
rental one in the back is still going to be 55 units or 65 units. With the new state funding round for smaller projects, they divided it up and went in early on the 12 unit one. And I'm doing some CDBG, I think it was 150,000 total, which is a drop in the bucket for these multi-million dollar projects, but they may, and, th and that's what I was trying to get from them, but I didn't hear from them because I thought it would be a quick answer that they would have their schedules thought out. And because I didn't hear from them, I'm thinking they haven't really thought out what they're coming back to you for. But obviously, there's a big ask that's outstanding for Village Hill, whether it's the 12 unit project or the 65. I think we are 55, I can't remember. So I'm assuming Village Hill will, will be back in, but I, as far as I know, that's the only one. I, I heard, I can't remember where I heard it. I feel like it was in the midst of the haze of a seven year old's birthday party. Uh, that the TCB project would have a big, had some kind of denial for some kind of state money or something. Is that, am I misremembering that completely? Or, or is there no news on that project? Um, I don't think, usually everybody gets turned down at least once before they get funded, but I don't think they've had their initial denial. There's been nothing yet, okay, okay. It was the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Wayfinders is out. Valley's out on any individual project, Habitat's out. The only thing I can anticipate is Village Hill. And that will be a big ask. Big, big as in? Well, they asked for what, four, 350, 450, and you gave them 50, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do, does, um, I'm doing 150 for CDBG, so. You said this new state program funds small projects. So that what, pushed what is a small? What does small mean? I think it's like 30 units and smaller. No, so the 54 is not small. No, but they were able to go in early for the 12 unit. And Linda and Jeff, nothing that you, and Sarah, nothing that you? No, the show is all I've heard about so far. You're right, Jeff, comment? Um, I guess I'm gonna be the contrary voice here tonight because um, I know there's issues with the process, and I appreciate that kind of this evolution of a project coming forward. Um, but I have the feeling that this is an expedited procedure, and that really means it just comes down to how much we, we are behind this concept. So if we like the project and we like its goals, then I don't have an issue with doing the expedited, um, given the reasons that were stated. Um, it doesn't change the, uh, the objective, and it doesn't change, it shouldn't change our feelings about the objective. It's a, if it's a good project now, it, it was a good project before, and it would be a good project later. Um, as far as the financing goes, I would be willing to support the first two phases with seventy-five dollars or $100,000 because it, it's going to be completed eventually and um, our contribution, the percentage of the CPC money that's going for this project is still you know, a smaller, pro smaller percentage than some projects we funded which was relying totally on CPC money. So I think when we've already got four units completed and operational, which is a good, good faith effort. So I feel more positive about the process. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that things changed and all the issues that you brought up on that are, are still true and factual and it, it's a terrible thing to get stuck in the middle of that. But, I think you're doing your best to overcome that in this situation. So I'd be willing to see the phase two completion with our help. And that doesn't commit us to funding it in the next cycle. I don't think we need, but it may be enough of a spur to get you some more donations or some more contributions that would actually reduce the need for more CBC money. So. I'm looking at a glass more half full than, than half empty, I guess. 
question. If, if we just hypothetically, we said to you, um, we really, we really like this project. Um, However, we don't want to uh, do this now. We would like to see it come in our regular round. What would an application like in the fall look like from you? Um, some of it would depend on how successful we were in um, fundraising up to that point. Um, and so mm -hmm. we have had really good numbers and are ahead of where we'd like to be. That that number would come down. But you could craft an application. So you're saying. Yeah. Um, the, we would definitely look at crafting an application. Um, we'd, uh, we'd certainly be looking at trying to figure out how to balance out the, the differences in you know, project cost increases versus additional funds we may have raised versus what we would be asking for. So um, it, it really it, it depends on how that balances out, you know, I guess, um, in the long run. So you said you're in the midst of the EE process. You're getting more bids back. Can you talk any more about what the kinds of things you're being? What, 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 what is the uh, value engineer? Yeah. So trying to cut things out. In the budget now. Scott, do you think you'd be better at talking about that than sure. myself, or did probably more articulate? Did you share the, the list with these folks? Um, I include a bunch of things in the the, um, the list that Dory created. Um, I didn't get that list from Dory in time to submit this, so I'm still actually waiting for that full list from. Dory that okay. had the, the line that pieces, unfortunately. Yep. Um, so I did a, a general list from our meeting notes. Okay, I'll see what I can come up with here. Uh, it ba basically, we're not cutting anything, that we're just changing the scope. We're not, the, the project is the same at the end of the day. We've looked at various finishes, uh, and as a matter of fact, our first meeting was with Carolyn Mish and uh, Doug McDonald from the town, from the city, excuse me, and as a result of that meeting, we saved $20,000 because we found that we didn't need to engineer a 100-year stormwater system, but rather a 10. So we've been doing things like that to really try and find savings. Uh, the millwork package was very intricate, so at the end of the day, they're still getting the same counters, same amount of counter space, same cabinetry, but we're trying to use box cabinets rather than all custom millwork. So we're trying to do things like that. The architects are very protective of the design because it's a beautiful design and it makes a lot of sense. Um, so we're trying to find different materials, finishes, uh, means and methods to reduce the cost. And I think we've been pretty successful. Like the numbers are coming in now. We're estimating in-house now. I'm starting to see the numbers come back. They're going in the right direction. Um, some of the bigger chunks, they had a very, very advanced roof assembly on this building uh, with SIPs and this really uh, complex multi-layered roof system. We've eliminated that and gone back to a much more conventional stick framed roof with a closed cell foam on the other side. Um, that was a major change. So something like that is 30 to $40,000. It just didn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. They're still getting a high performance roof assembly. Um, the wall systems were similar, uh, very advanced systems. Oh, what are you doing on the wall? The wall system now is a high R zip sheathing, two inch, so it's a good thermal break on the outside of the studs uh, with a, a cedar uh, rain screen, a cedar, uh, home slicker rain screen, and hardy siding. Uh, whereas before it was um, poly ice, a rigid foam insulation, and core event and a couple other assemblies. Uh, we went to Marvin Integrity windows versus commercial grade aluminum storefront style windows. That was $6,000. We've taken uh, the stair system and pulled the custom metal railings out of there and gone with conventional um, wood frame guards. That was $6,000. So, so the six, I'm confused how much of that is already reflected in the $650,000 is all of that, that is the so the, the project cost came in um, somewhere in, in the neighborhood of $900,000 so you've gotten it down to six fifty. dollars are you is there any further plus side value down. engineering that you're doing that you're waiting for the, what you're describing now describes the six fifty. that's right so is there any further cost I think that, that the the answer to that is yes, there are other opportunities that 
the architect is holding in their pocket. Um, for example, going to vinyl siding. So they're trying to avoid some of the obvious, you know, if we can make it happen for this, the budget that's been placed in front of the team uh, by Phil, then we'd rather not go down that road and um, go to vinyl siding and pressure treated decks and things like that. So the way the building is put together right now is still very, very nice. It's all boral, it's all party style siding and truck stacking and very well put together. Um, the next step now we're going to get into, I think, more cuts rather than modifications. And it is possible to do that. Um, I don't recall, we, we did bat around those numbers and I think speculating 30 to 50,000 more dollars of potential savings, but now you're going into a different category of building. Mm -hmm. So six, six fifty. But there's also site work that is part of the building instruction, like you said, the concrete. The foundation. Yeah. I think we're we're leaning. What we're trying to accomplish is a seven hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars construction cost, mm -hmm. and then the soft costs are what you're seeing on top of that getting you up to fifty. So when we, so some of which are already expended. Correct. Yeah. So when the square footage went up by almost a third, and it sounds like Dory was working pro bono for a while and then Correct. shifted into a contract. So there was some assumptions about how big this thing would be, and then what what were the drivers that changed it that made it so much bigger? Code, uh, I think habitable space requirements. I'm not sure. I can't speak for Dory or Henry. I'm not sure where that issue. Is there a code problem. requirement to have a kitchen in each unit? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about the kitchen in each unit. The enhanced SRO style for the program has the, the kitchen in each unit. There was some stuff around the, I think the units were originally designed um, as a smaller space and there was a state requirement for more square footage per unit sure. um, than they had originally anticipated. Mm -hmm. You, are you saying rather than like a dormitory side? I'm trying to understand what the design process was. And, you know, I mean, I'm not, also not sure like what are the nature of the units that are in the other four, the other four units that are in the existing house, are they comparable? So the other, so the other four, four units are, um, have, our first floor is two bedrooms with a shared um, kitchen and living room and bathroom. Second floor, two bedrooms, shared kitchen um, and bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, so the units in the um, the new units are all enhanced SRO. So each unit, it's, so it's an efficiency unit with its own built-in bathroom and kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and those units are consistent with the units we've developed and had a, a, a lot of success with over the last 10 years in our projects in Greenfield, Turner's Falls, and Orange. Mm -hmm. And that's something that can use the code variance? I mean, the zoning variance? Or is that a lot of SROs? How is that dealt with? On the so um, Dial Self has an educational exemption as a 501c3, okay. so we were able to. But that's what triggers it to be a commercial building, not a residential building. That has the, the units, and we have a program space as well. But I think the number of units was the primary driver there. The number of units in yeah. the commercial and triggered sprinklers. Yep. So, okay. Greater than three units, you need fire suppression. Um, I'm still struggling with this uh, 100,000 ask or 75 to 100,000 and the vision of a foundation lying there without additional money available. And w what if we funded 100,000 and then we didn't give any money the next cycle and you're, I mean, that seems um, fraught with, con with concern so to partially fund have a phase two go up, waiting or hoping for additional funding in an uncertain climate. And the preference certainly would be for the, 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 full, um, the full ask. Um, the 100,000 would, would get us, I think, just to the edge of, of phase two, which, and phase two in the construction as we have it out here would, would be um, the, the weather type building. So at, at the $100,000 level right now, would get us to site work done, a foundation, and then a building on that foundation, weather tight, 
but basically nothing in the building. Or please jump in, Tom. Not the end of phase two? The end of phase yes. two, yeah. yeah. And you would feel comfortable proceeding with that without knowing that additional funding was coming? We'd certainly be stepping up our, our fundraising during that time frame, so that we could try to look at additional um, um, sources. But we'd re much rather have that going forward with the exterior frame, knowing that we'll get there um, eventually, um, than have those costs, um, those construction costs, continue to add up as well in terms of going forward. We don't see the cost for the project going down. So the the, the as far as we're concerned, the, the the longer each phase goes, the, the more expensive the, pro the project goes, the more money we have to raise, and it's just a continual um, process for us going forward at this point. Um, from a fundraising standpoint, um, in terms of like public fundraising, um, it's, it's also going to be easier for us to be able to take pictures of the projects as they're, they're going on and, and be showing those to potential funders who are going to get excited about, oh yeah, this is what's going on, we can, we're, we're willing to get behind this as opposed to, you know, um, we, we want to we wanna do this, but we're still waiting on, you know, any money whatsoever. I think that we'll have a much better luck with um, doing private fundraising while we're showing that we have um, something to show for it, that there's, there's a project, there's something physical someone can come in and take a look at and say, oh yeah, I, act I absolutely want to, you know, uh, sponsor that bedroom's interior. I absolutely want to, you know, um, be the one who's responsible for helping you finish off the, the program space where kids are going to be getting counseling and, and support services. So um, there's, a, there's a benefit to us there as well from a fundraising perspective to have that, that building outline um, in addition to the cost savings and the, to getting it that much closer to the finish line. But no occupancy at all until phase four is done, right? For those four units, yeah. yeah. Peg, is there anything you'd like to add? <laughs> no, but thank you. We certainly need the units. Um, just for, you know, the communication thing, Phil didn't want to come back here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got the call when the budgets came, when, you know, when the bids came back on phase two. So this guy was legitimately freaked out and mortified. So there's, just put that out there. You know, he never expected that number to be as high as it was. And, you know, we're trying to do everything we can. I put the people in the room to figure out the stormwater issue. I'm glad we were able to knock down a few things there. But, um, you know, we're going to get slammed in the fall. And, I keep talking about never ending adult homelessness unless we don't get to the kids and you know we're just so close to this project and eight units is, is small you know I, I'd hate to just have it see before you know and that would be the end of it but you know if Village Hill comes in you're not going to have that big ticket item either so I, I feel your pain I, I appreciate your questions but I'd sure like to see you get this one to the finish line. What did you mean we're going to get slammed? What does that mean? With youth, homeless youth, finally getting their acts together in September and October and thinking, wow, maybe I need a, a place to live. Because summer everybody's off you know, doing their thing, but the, de the demand is there now. It's going to be worse. Good questions? comments okay so we need a motion on the floor will someone make a motion I move we funded 75,000 okay is there a second second, second. Get the second okay discussion on that I, un I understand better now how you got to where you are, and I, so I, I appreciate that better. Um, so I feel your distress. I also continue with my distress, however. <laughs> um, and I guess I, subject to other people's comments convincing me otherwise, I guess I would come down on the side of um, 
encouraging you to fundraise like heck to the extent you can, come back with as hard numbers as you can in September, and we hope that we don't get a lot of applications and we could fund you fully, but we might not. And I, I think we really need the opportunity to look at what else is coming in for funding, and yours may be where we decide we ultimately want to put our dollars. That would make me feel very good if, if we were in a position to do that. I just don't feel like we're in a position to do that. That's my feeling. Thank you, Linda. Other discussion on the motion to 475,000? So I just want to explain why I chose that. A, to make the motion and beat that number. Um, I, I really appreciate what Julie said about the fact that um, we never fund these things at full level. And I, I actually suspect that um, in a competitive environment, that would be where I would end up on this. Um, I, I want to I be with Jack. <laughs> Um, uh, in in cautious optimism that, that this is gonna this is gonna because I really don't know that we're gonna be able to afford the funds even if we want to. Um, so I'm willing to basically say this is where I'm going and I'm willing to do it now. But don't come back for more. Is that what you're saying? It would have to be a really really warm day. <laughs> Chris, why 75 and not 100? Hedging my bets. I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm also with Jeff on the I don't like flying black this early in the process. Um, I, I would I would have liked to have gone 100, but that's the part of why I'm 75 is to, is to see, give myself a little more wiggle room as we move into the year. Well, let, me, let me ask what you think the feasibility of fundraising an additional, what would that be, $151,000 on top of the hundred and whatever you're raising? Yeah, I think 35 or something. It's going to be a challenge, and we'll work on um, trying to figure out how to shift that towards, again, the end of the project. Um, we'll definitely talk with um, some folks we have great finance and let them see what their comfort levels are and whether they'd be willing to extend some financing at what rates or if they might be able to do some deferred interest rates to try to make up the um, time frame issues that we're going to be looking at. See, when I'm, com I, I, I like the idea of giving the money and part of me wants to just say, yeah, do it. But if we give that money now, we don't get the answer to that question until later and We've expended the money, and the fundraising may not happen. And then we've sunk seventy-five thousand dollars into. I hear you. I hear you. So what you just described about um, fundraising and seeing if you can procure um, a loan or something like that—you um, would have to do that anyway if you gave me gave us. We gave you money now. We still have to do the fundraising, correct? Yeah. Yes. So I guess you know, we're talking about September, which is now you know, basically July, but it's like three and a half months or something before you can resubmit to us. And I realize you've got this big time crunch coming on because the winter bearing down on you and not wanting the construction costs to go up, but it just seems like, um, from what I'm hearing everybody saying, and I agree with a lot of it, uh, that. Um, waiting three months or three and a half months um, to put in a more complete application with all the information we've requested from you and do some fundraising at the same time would put you in a much better position. I think of getting perhaps more money for us, not less. Uh, it's only half this. I work back quickly. <laughs> and does it go by quickly? <laughs> Part of the reason we're trying to find yeah. funds now. Yeah. Martha, I was hearing Phil say with a, if 75 got them through phase two, a completed show would enhance fundraising. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And 75 would get you through phase two. Okay. I, I think it, I think we, we could probably get through a through phase two with um, with the seventy five. Um, we we find a way. Um, yeah. If I, yeah. I can just add to the if you do get through phase two, you can go dormant through the winter. I think sensibly, the building would be in a position that would allow you to start it back up in the spring or whatever made sense with the cycles or your, mm -hmm. whereas starting in September or October would put you yeah. in a more difficult yeah. position. No, I mean, yeah, you explained all of that really well. Uh, Peggy is Peggy. I'm so sorry. I just want to make a differentiation. Um, this project is not going for state funding. This is not like a big one stop. Mm -hmm state application potential compared to Village Hill. You know, mm -hmm. if they're they're getting CDBG money so they can go to the state and say we have a local cash match, which does take the pressure off CPC. This is a completely different scale of the project. You guys are much bigger in their yeah. scope of need than the other big affordable housing developers. Thank you. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> Oh, it's, a, it's a good point. It's a very different, different model. You've got different sources of funding. Other uh, questions, comments on the motion on the floor? And I think what we're saying is, if we do decide to fund them now, we we don't want to see another application in the fall. Am I correct to understand that? No, I, I don't think we yeah. can say that. Okay. It's up to I mean, that is entirely up to the applicant okay. whether to submit or not. Okay. Uh, is that the sense of the? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm in, I'm inclined to I'm going to move over to Jack's side a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> We're all soft. Um, <laughs> if you look at if you look at that email that. Um, John Pry sent us this afternoon, mm -hmm. which is very long, um, toward the back of it. And I know because I made the mistake of trying to print it and then discovered the thing was massive and I was quickly trying to kill the printer. I finally did because so, it was too much paper, but they had the whole totals for housing, um, affordable housing for historic preservation. Um, and housing is lacking um, and that's fine because there's a lot of good things to fund but when we did a lot the last cycle I kind of think like if these I don't know what these state the state match is going to be that seems to be a roll of the dice which way that's going to come in and and a lot of that would, would be unrestricted money that we could also throw at housing and still have money left over for whatever these other projects are and to, to, to Peg's point just about, um, I mean, they're, it's, a, it's a fine project, but I'm more, I'm honestly more impressed with what you folks are trying to do on a small scale than I am with Village Hill. And I had problems internally with Village Hill lat when they first proposed in the cycle, but that's another story. You don't need to go there, but I'm, I'm, I like what you're doing. Um, I think I think uh, what other people have said, just fundraise like hell. Whoever those three donors are, start arm twisting, whatever you gotta do. And, uh, and I, I, I do agree that um, you do need some local support from a group like this to enhance your fundraising. Um, so I'm inclined to do the um, 75 and I hope I hope it works out. I, that said, I wasn't around when this project was first funded, and I said on May 30th. Uh, also, I'm amazed that you got the full amount at that time because the reality we're in right now is, like Julia said, we just don't fund. Some of these things are huge. Village Hill being a perfect example. Um, we just don't fund the full amount of, of these proposals because the, it's just so tight out there. Oh. 
Any other comments? Are we ready to vote? Uh, just the one thing. I, I think we heard loud and clear. <coughs> You've done a certain amount of budgeting of this project, but you said to us you have not taken any scope away, and your architect is holding some things back. The architect is not the applicant. You need to tell your architect what to do, and you can tell your architect to get this job to where I need it to be. I, I worry. And, and there's a lot of redeemable things about some of the things you're talking about. Solar I don't, I don't, we're not even talking about solar panels, I guess, but you know, can you have a project without solar panels? I think so. Solar so panels are included from, in that cost. That's, that's not in that at all. That's, okay. a, that's a so, wash. So all the other things. I don't want to get into like the detail of, you know, is it tax or is it pressure treatment or whatever, but when you think of, a, of CPC as a whole, we are allowing public money to go to places without any of the process rules that other public projects have to go through. And the very basic one is do a cost estimate by like a professional cost estimate. And I, I kind of think coming out is we should not allow projects to be, you know, we shouldn't take applications that have the cost estimate because not because we're trying to be it's, it's really for the sake of the applicants, I think. Um, so I just don't feel like this project is really where it could be to be more manageable all around. Because I worry about the long-term effect of people saying, CBC funded what, for who, and what, you know? So how can we get this project done in a way that is appropriate? I, mean, I just don't think, that, and, and because we're judging it against, like you keep saying, it's projects we have not seen yet, possibly. And they might be affordable housing projects, they might be other types of projects who, in a sense, would be punished for following the rules, you know, or the rules, you know, for best practices or whatever. So I just, I, I can't get over my uneasiness with that. Um, okay. Thank you, Kevin. Anybody else? Comments? Okay, the motion on the table is uh, to fund at 75000 the Dial Self uh, project. All those in favor? All those opposed? So that's two, four, six to two. That that passes. Okay, got that, sir. Um, sir, can you inform us as to what the timetable would be to move this through City Council? Well, we would, I don't know how the committee wants to do this. Usually you approve the council order. Um, you could assign me to do that or I could work with someone on the committee. Um, but that would need to go to council not before July because we don't have the money. And council only needs once each July and August. And they may choose to waive their two readings re requirement. They, they may not. That's at the council's prerogative. And when is that July meeting? You said you didn't need the actual vote, though. Did you mean just the from the well, decision? Yeah. I, I believe that we had said you had. There was a question at the last meeting about has the council ever not approved a CPC recommendation, and the answer was no. But they could. But they could. But they could. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant in terms of your process, in terms of what you actually need to move to the next step. You actually need to show a paper saying the council's vote. That'd be helpful. Um, that certainly would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, I thought we had, there was a statement that the, the next council meeting might have been on July 1st. Um, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Around July 1st. Okay. Maybe that was just a. I must have misheard. You were hoping. Mm -hmm. I was hoping. Well, uh, as it looks like we're 12. 12th of July. Um, are, are there conditions that we would set on this? That's the thing that we most actively do. Can folks think of conditions we want to put on this? Do we put conditions on the first round two years ago, Sarah? Do you? Uh, we. No? There's a restriction. Yeah, and we require a certain number of units. Yeah. Currently. Oh. Because that project is so early in the 
development stages and our money was only for acquisition. I think it was just the number of units in the affordable housing district. Okay. So we would want to do that as well? Conditions being four units with the income restrictions? And that restriction is already on the deed. So the property already has that restriction. But it's not a separate lot. It's, no, it, it's all up all, all together. Sir, my copy of the contract shows three hundred thousand dollars. Was that a typo in the draft or something? For this project? No, for the sixteen. For the original. Yeah, that may have been something that was cut. Yeah, the typo. Yeah, I think I just have the draft for it. What was it? Two hundred. Three hundred. But it was two seventy. Two seventy-five. Two seventy-five. Yeah. That was a cut and paste. Okay. So, conditions of four units. Income restrictions is. Uh, do people feel comfortable with Sarah drafting those yeah. things up? And Sarah can certainly look them over. Do you need me to do that? And then we can move forward. Request that City Council um, expedite as well and waive a second reading. Are you able to do that? Uh, yes, we can ask, but they, they don't always do that. Okay. Which means. You would have to wait until what is it the second Wednesday? When, when do they meet? Uh, I don't know when they meet. Their schedule is a We ever asked them to do that? Uh, we have for our other expedited project. Uh, I think they, I think they always have. So, any other business unforeseen when? Uh, the agenda was made. Thank you, folks, for coming in. Thank you. We appreciate all the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you.